So now for the uh, good looking portion of the presentation. <laughs> and imagine how much funnier that joke would have been with mimosas. <laughs> Richard? So there are two ways to sort of measure income growth in Kern County. And the first is per capita income. And that measures income for everyone in Kern County. Students, children, the retired, the working age. And then there's also average wages, which just measures how good individuals who are in the labor market. And so what we see on this graph is we see that per capita income, sort of the measure of income for everyone, is growing much faster than average wages. So that hints that there's something driving income growth in Kern County that isn't related to wage growth. And so we can look at what's happening to supplement a lot of incomes for households. And so there are two general measures of income supports. One is total transfer payments. That's all social welfare programs. That's Medicare, Medi-Cal, Social Security, unemployment, cash welfare. Then there's income maintenance. And what income maintenance is, is that's your traditional cash welfare. And so what we see is that most of the growth, 75% of the growth in household incomes in Kern County are by these social welfare programs. Wages only explain about 25% of the growth in incomes in Kern County. And the two main types of social welfare programs that we think might be supplementing household incomes are the medical benefits, again, Medicare, Supplemental Children's Health Insurance Program, Medicare, but also income maintenance. So if we break down the growth of per capita income and the growth of per capita transfer receipts, again, we see since 2010, what's been growing incomes in Kern County are the social welfare programs, not the wages. But something that's a little bit encouraging is if we break it down into the growth of your traditional cash welfare programs, that is not growing incomes in Kern County. So we aren't seeing cash payments to individuals growing our incomes. It's actually sort of the non-cash benefits that can only be used for certain programs. So the Medi-Cal benefits, food stamps, things like that. And so why should we care about this? What does this mean? Well, if we're seeing incomes being grown because of transfer payments, it's largely because of educational deficiencies in Kern County. A quarter of residents in Kern County, so about 220,000 people, do not have a high school diploma. A quarter. That's a very large number. And we can see how this impacts long-term economic growth and viability. So in 2015, if you have a college degree, on average, you earn $60,000. If you have a high school diploma, $30,000. If you are a high school dropout, $20,000. If you look at unemployment rates by educational attainment, one in seven people without a high school diploma are unemployed. It's one in nine for a high school graduate and about one in five for a college graduate. And so this hints that we have a market-based solution, education. Education is hugely important. Education matters significantly, and it can improve everyone's lifestyle in Kern County. And so I've done some forecasts and stuff like that because it's fun to do that, and I think that's what people care about. Richard Dahl is harping on me to tell people numbers. So if you decrease the number of high school dropouts in Kern County by 146 students per year, so not a tremendous amount, that will increase average wages by $130. In sort of more realistic terms, that means that by having a high school diploma, you earn about $10,000 more per year. Over the course of a 40-year working lifespan, that's $400,000 more. It's a pretty nice house in Seven Oaks. It's, and again, you have to sort of tell you, know, 
I tell this to my students all the time. The one thing high school boys are not good at is looking for their future. You know, they care about the big shiny truck, all these other things. And so if you were to increase the number of college enrollees per year by about 900, that would increase average wages by about $130 per year. And that's largely a demand side response. That's employers moving to the area to tap into a large creative workforce. And so this amounts to about $31,000 per year in additional income. Over the course of a 40-year lifespan, that's 1.2 million. And if your spouse graduated from college, that's $2.4 million more. That's a lot of trips to Hawaii. That's a pretty nice retirement that you can live. And why is education important? There are different ways to sort of improve what we see in Kern County. And one of those is economic stimulus. Everyone talks about economic stimulus, uh, helicopter Ben, just dumping money from a helicopter, all those sorts of things. Well, these stimulus packages pale in comparison to the impacts that we could have if we improved educational outcomes by 1,000 people per year, 1,000 youths per year. That's a very small fraction of the entire population of Kern County. Why does education matter? Education improves productivity. It allows workers to pair with highly productive capital or technology. And it creates incentives for high-tech, high-innovation firms to come to the area. And so I've decided to do a couple wage forecasts. There's three. There's what we would consider with a normal trend. That's the blue line. The red line is the pessimistic view. That's where if there were a recession this year. And then there's a green line. That's the optimistic. That's if the economy were to grow at 4 or 5%. So you look. If there's a recession, high school grads are dramatically impacted. They never recover from a recession even four years after the fact. Look at college graduates. The optimistic view has them making $23,000 more in the next five years. That's tremendous. And that's largely, again, the demand side response. Employers want to take into account sort of these creative workers who can grow their business. But even the pessimistic view, college workers are still no worse off. So education matters. Education is, the, is probably the biggest potential driver in this area. And now I want to focus on uh, something that no matter who I talk to will piss everyone off. <laughs> That's health care. And so uh, I don't have any estimates on the AHCA. Uh, I haven't. I've read parts of the bill. Who knows what's going to happen? So I provide estimates on the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. And so I just want to make it clear that if you see good indicators, if you see bad indicators, that doesn't say anything about the long-term viability of the program. There are a lot of other factors that come into play that make a difference and make an impact. And so the first thing I want to talk about in healthcare is cost containment. And cost containment is a long-term goal. And the reason why it's a long-term goal is for the simple fact that people's behaviors are atrocious. You know, uh, you wake up in the morning at 5 and you sit there and you go, I'm going to go to the gym today, and by the time you finish brushing your teeth, you've hit the snooze button, you're back in bed, you're just, just not going back to the gym. So there are a lot of factors that sort of reduce the ability of any healthcare worker to have an impact. But it's also hard to judge any health-related reforms without taking a multi-generational approach. So think about it this way. How easy would it be for you to change your diet today? I'm not changing my diet. I my wife bought me a kegerator for my birthday. It sits squarely in my kitchen, and it's very well put to use, as Dr. Macheka pointed out. And so 
Maybe it's the impacts on the children and them learning from the behaviors of their parents that are important. So why are millennials skinnier than any other age group in this country? Maybe they're learning about the cost of obesity from their parents. Uh, maybe, you know. I, I think I'm a millennial. I don't know how that works anymore. And so since 2010, this is Medi-Cal benefits. Medi-Cal benefits have been pretty much the grower of income in Kern County. It's a non-targeted transfer payment, so it can only be used for health care, but it has been supplementing a lot of people's incomes. And are we seeing returns from these increases in the welfare payments? So if you look, I have five-year pre-ACA and five-year post-ACA. Medi-Cal benefit payments have increased tremendously. Medi-Cal expansion, Medicaid expansion, has increased the number of enrollees on Medi-Cal, and these are largely sicker individuals who haven't had care in a while, so their costs are going to be higher. But if you look at per capita health care spending, that's fallen precipitously. Again, part of the issue is in Kern County, we faced a recession from 2007 to 2009 at the national level, lowered oil prices. Maybe people just aren't spending money on health care because they don't have money. Something that's good, fewer Medi-Cal patients are being readmitted to hospitals. That speaks to the high quality of the medical care providers in Kern County. Unfortunately, a lot of the Medi-Cal beneficiaries are still utilizing the ER as their primary source of care. You know, uh, if you've ever been to an ER, it's one of the more unpleasant experiences you can ever imagine. And it's not because of the way the ER is set up. It's just the nature of people's behaviors. If you are used to going to the ER for care, you're not going to stop going to the ER for care just because your health insurance status has changed. And so we have to be careful. We've seen per capita health care costs increasing over time. But if you look at the red line, the growth in per capita health care spending, it's been less than 3% since 2010 and for several years has been negative. So we are spending less and health outcomes throughout Kern County are improving tremendously. Part of the reason is we are seeing fewer citizens per doctor and per nurse. So there are more providers in the area. That's good. We need more providers to take care of a aging population and a population that has a lot of health issues. So again, I want to sort of estimate what we think is happening. So if you look at Medi-Cal, so if you increase the salary of a primary care physician by $10,000 to attract and retain talent, Medi-Cal spending increases by only $38. You start to see Medi-Cal patients moving out of the ER, seeing private doctors. That's incredibly productive. If you were to decrease the poverty rate by 10%, you will decrease per capita Medi-Cal spending by $300. So again, there are these tremendous benefits that we can have by improving educational outcomes. Education is the biggest link to poverty. Improving education, we solve a lot of the healthcare spending woes that we've seen. Medicare, basically, Medicare is very costly. It's the third rail of American politics. Uh, so I will subsequently skip it. <laughs> and so I found data on health insurance premiums in Kern County, and I forecasted what we think will happen. Series names are gone. So the red line is if we were to move back to our old system, pre-ACA with nothing reformed. And so that would tend to lower health insurance premiums as a lot of the sick, sicker individuals exit the risk pool. But as we see, that leads to higher premium growth. The blue line is if the ACA were to continue without any further reform, and we see that health insurance premiums in Kern County would grow by about 4% per year. 
This was even after the 12% premium increase on average in 2015. And so I've again forecasted what I think will happen to healthcare spending. And there's a pessimistic view. Uh, the pessimistic view is if the ACA uh, is reformed, but it's bad reform. I don't really know how to quantify bad reform. I just know that it could exist. There's a green line. The green line is the optimistic view. And the optimistic view is that the ACA works like a charm. So we're probably somewhere between the green line and the blue line. The red line is back to pre-ACA. And again, what we tend to think will happen is that healthcare spending is going to grow. Well, this is kind of the bad chart. So the green line, current ACA, this is total healthcare spending in Kern County. It will increase slightly to about $12,000 per person. So $12,000 per person, think about the magnitude of that. The line in poverty, the line of poverty is about $24,000. That's people spending half of their income on health care. It's unsustainable. Well, what really gets unsustainable is if we have bad reform. Bad reform is disastrous. And so I sort of end this with you know, a warning, reform for the sake of reform is bad. We need to do smart reform. So whatever your views, and this is what pisses people off, so. Whatever your views on the Affordable Care Act, the AHCA, whatever your views, we have to be smart about this. This is long term. We cannot easily get rid of any reforms that we do. And so I want to thank you and have a great rest of your day.